about myself uh, been in the industry for 20 plus years now and uh, all through it uh, core consulting delivery sales uh, and now global delivery and uh, been with the organization uh, since 2006 and i currently manage a portfolio of business uh, around discrete and process manufacturing uh, predominantly uh, looking at solving customer problems uh, through different digital solutions Look at uh, Techem as such. Uh, so we're we're part of a large conglomerate called the Mahindra Group. Uh, the group today is about 75 year old. Uh, you know we operate in multiple business sectors. Um, you know we are about more than 250,000 plus people. Um, and uh, out of the 150 plus bunch of um, uh, companies which we have, there are four core businesses the group operates: the automotive. Uh, the finance, the farm equipment and uh, information technology. In fact, uh, we are the largest manufacturer of uh, tractors in the world. Um, we we have specific focus around what we call as growth gens, which is uh, nothing but our emerging business, uh, like our logistics business or our real estate or into home finance. Um, we are into agri. In fact, uh, agri tech is something which we do uh, really large today in this part of the world. Uh, plus, we also have specific focus on what we call as digital business. These are a bond digital, uh, like uh, we have a porter, which is essentially like the Uber of uh, goods movement in India. Uh, we have First Cry, which essentially focuses on the expectant uh, mothers as well as the infant until about uh, two years old. Uh, we have a digital finance company, which we call as a digital fin, which essentially provides uh, finances on the fly. So that's to kind of tell you, uh, you know, the core purpose is to really look at how, uh, as a company, um, you know, we are helping um, more for uh, an equal world. How do we really, uh, you know, rise to be a future ready? We call it as a rise tenets um, because uh, and how do we really create value for our stakeholders? And here the stakeholders being, um, you know, our investors, our employees, our customers, our partners and the overall uh, ecosystem. Um, so Techem as such uh, focuses on uh, digital transformation, consulting uh, and implementation services. Um, we're about close to $6.5 billion in size. We work with the Fortune 100, 500 base, uh, present in about 90 countries. And uh, we also, over a period of time, had acquired a bunch of portfolio of companies. I mean, if you've heard of Pin and Farina, the, the designers of Ferrari, uh, you know, the Bond Group, uh, which probably has won the largest, uh, you know, the Webby Awards uh, for the agency business, the Mad Power, which typically focuses on the behavioral analytics of uh, in the e-commerce side, um, so so on and so forth. So essentially, you know, we are really looking at how do we, uh, you know, help the overall experience for our customers. And here, when we talk about experience, that becomes our, um, in fact, our key focus because. We're all living in, in this connected world, uh, but what really matters to every individual is the kind of experience which we are able to provide and enable. And that's essentially what we do. We are in the business of, um, you know, enabling experiences. And uh, that's also one of the primary reason we think uh, WSO2 partnership is very important because it's not about creating an experience as an event, but, act but actually creating a sustainable experience today because that's a convergence of, uh, you know, consulting, design, connectivity, uh, engineering, um, innovation, all of it coming together uh, so that we are able to create that sustainable experience for our customers. So we have a very focused approach, which we call as Next Dot Now, uh, where we help our customers, um, you know, reimagine, um, you know, whether it is their business, whether it is their core business process, uh, whether it is their technology landscape, we help them build that um, and then we also help them run that more efficiently. So that's what we call as Imagine Build Run, which is nothing but our next dot now platform. And we've done that uh, across multiple industry segments, whether it is uh, communication, media, entertainment, uh, the manufacturing, the BFSI, retail, consumer goods. Um, you know, we work across every, possibly every single business vertical. Um, and, uh, you know, we probably work with the top five, the top 10 uh, in each of these verticals globally. So that also gives us the, the, the leverage of experience which we bring from one vertical to another vertical. Um, so that also 
allows us to offer a, a bouquet of services and solutions for our uh, customers. So the way we've um, kind of um, you know integrated WSO2 into our core offerings is part of our customer experience itself. And if you really look at um, CX for us um, today, is is about you know having everybody keeps talking about customer experience. But it's also about how do we really make it immersive, engaging, how do we really enable it digitally and physically? And second is how do you do this across different channels, right? I mean, it's a, it's a truly an omni-channel. But uh, the, the clear um, gap in terms of, uh, you know, achieving that that holy grail is, is there is no single book of record. We call it as a book of record within an enterprise because the enterprise is so siloed. Um, so for us, the way we look at it, um, we have, um, you know, broken the entire customer experience into three parts. We call it as the brand experience, uh, the behavioral experience and the book of record experience. So that's CX for us. And we have a framework um, called uh, the Stella framework. I think, uh, I mean, if you could just probably bring up the slide, Udari, uh, so that people understand what the Stella framework is. Uh, the framework itself uh, powers, um, um, you know, first is the brand experience, right? I mean, how do you really discover a brand? Uh, what are the different touch points? Uh, how do you really take a customer from their first uh, party data experience to, uh, you know, the end goal of actually becoming an advocate for that particular brand? So there's a whole life cycle for it. The second is the behavioral experience, which is through those different channels or touch points. It could be mobile, it could be web, it could be social. It could be in-person, um, right? How do you package it? How do you deliver it? So those are the typical delivering through those channels. So essentially, we experience a brand through a channel. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we've got to record that behavior through the brand experiences through the book of records. So that could be your underlying IT, which supports it, right? It could be your data. It could be your applications. Um, it could be your ERP, your customer relationship management systems, or it could be any other system which is powering that. But what really sticks or stitches all this together is your APIs, right? And today, um, you know, that's where we see a very strategic fit because it is an API-driven um, economy. Uh, and obviously, you know, security today is taken for granted. Um, so we, we nobody's even thinking that we can have a, a, a non-secure or non-secure type of a an experience so so that becomes the whole framework so we have a very defined framework for that uh, and we go through all of these uh, the way we serve our customers is whether it is uh, customer experience right from the strategy uh, helping them build the connected experience across different channels uh, how do you acquire a customer how do you personalize it um, right how do you really look at abandonment how do you really engage so there are there's a whole lot of uh, science and art behind it, then how do you really build the physical experience? Because we had acquired companies like Pin and Farina, we are able to do the actual product design, packaging design, creating that that whole space design for it. We do the, the typical core engineering and machinery because we have the core capability with our engineering services. And then we also take it through the service experience because as an end customer, depending upon what persona is using that product or a service, how do you really build through the entire strategy? Uh, orchestrated through the different operational experience it could be for example i'm 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 kind of placing an order or i'm sourcing something or how do i primarily look at uh, you know capturing and using the data uh, which is which can be used to uh, you know uh, cross seller upsell so how do i really support my sellers my vendors and then obviously the the complete data integrity the kind of text mining and the data science and the forecasting and planning which we do Typical case study uh, for you in that area would be something like, um, you know, Coca-Cola. Um, if if uh, people in the North America would have would have experienced, uh, you know, more than 150 flavors being delivered through a single gun uh, in a Coke vending machine. So the whole vending machine itself was designed by us. The core engineering part of the delivery system for the drink is designed by us. The interaction of the digital screen um, of the different brands, right? Whether it is a Coke or a Fanta or whatever is designed by us. And there's a whole lot of data getting captured, getting, uh, there's a lot of analytics and data science behind it. And obviously the backfill of the, you know, the different flavor, uh, when it is going to come out, how do you really manage the whole operations behind it? So imagine the whole nine yards and we are not yeah. talking about one machine. We are talking about, you know, covering 
uh, whole of North America. And all of this today is available in real time to the, um, to the management of um, the co team who actually can now look at different strategies of cross-selling, upselling uh, of their services. Now, that's a true customer experience case study for us. And in all of this, you have to imagine there are multiple systems, there are multiple uh, touch points. And each of these touch points, you have integration, you have security, which run as the common themes across all of these pillars. Um, so just to kind of tell you, you know, how we work end to end. Um, and and I agree with, um, you know, some of what was really spoken earlier, especially with APK coming in. I think you guys are really investing in the right areas uh, because especially for customers, imagine having a multi-cloud environment, APK becomes a natural fit for you to really manage your entire APIs in a much more effective way. Uh, he did touch upon that in terms of the different use cases, but I think it's it's it, we see a very natural fit uh, for WSO2 overall. Absolutely, just as a case in point, right? Um, for example, look at what is happening in the auto industry. See, uh, if you look at uh, between 1900 and 1913, uh, 1900 we were still using horse carts. And 1913, people shifted to the, the T, the T model, right? Which led to the Ford growth. Now, look at what's happening. I mean, Tesla came in in 2003. We are sitting in 2023. And look at the kind of industrialization happening on the EV segment. Now, that's what is happening in the automotive industry. Now, as an OEM, now you think about the kind of challenges they would have. There are two clear parts to it, the way we say, right? How do people first buy the car or how do they get their hands on a car? Second is that once they have it, how does the OEM now maximize the potential to have various other cross-selling and upselling, um, you know, features, which means that uh, it is no longer just the core engineering capability. There was a time when, you know, the German machines would say, hey, I have a better car, I have a better horsepower, I have a better transmission, which is no longer the differentiating factor for an OEM. It's not the engineering capability. It is about the the customer experience. Today, Tesla sells more, not because of just the range, but also because of the kind of experience they provide end to end, right? And that would mean that, you know, the OEMs will have to become more technology led. They have to become more data rich. They are talking about uh, more and more customer centric innovations, which they will have to do. All of this can happen only when uh, the enterprise is now open for business in terms of the different touch digital touch points. And those touch points could be, for example, a car buying journey today. You could sit at home and buy a car. That's what happened during the pandemic. Uh, and we enabled uh, this particular OEM we are talking about is, is giving them that, uh, uh, you know, the end customer experience today is about the flexible ownership, right? They want the typical Uber cooler, Amazon like services, right? And it has to be a, a, a core seamless digital ecosystem. So what we did in this case for this OEM was we use the WSO2's uh, IAM powered security just to provide the end to end security. We provide the end to end e commerce experience for them, right from the discovery phase to the deliberation to the purchase to promote. In all of the phases, uh, we have uh, kind of enabled it through the IAM and we use the API management uh, to really stitch the different enterprise systems coming together uh, to bring that uh, you know seamless experience for an end customer. So today, uh, they have multiple brands. So irrespective of the brand, uh, the end customer is buying, you would get a seamless end experience, you know, end user experience. So uh, that would mean that every brand will have uh, the premium brands, let's say, would have a slightly different experience. And if I'm a, a, a customer for that particular OEM, let's say having more than one car of that particular brand, I would obviously be treated very special. So it's becoming more and more personalized. It is becoming more and more tailored to me as an individual. And all of that is possible because the underlying layer is the API management. Obviously, we stitch the different flows and the different services together. And all this has to happen in the most secure way. And we cannot do that. So we are talking about omni-channel here, whether it is their web or mobile or their dealership as the customers walk in. Uh, there is a single unique ID for every customer across the globe. So it doesn't matter. You could buy, you could be buying uh, the brand in North America. Let's say you move into Europe and you continue to, uh, you know, want to have the ownership experience of the same brand. 
uh, you know, the OEM would know that you're an existing customer of North America. That's the intel which we are essentially today enabling through this. Obviously, it's decentralized integration. It's very fine-grained. We are getting into the containerization. And obviously, all of this is happening through a private cloud today. But, um, you know, that's the whole, uh, you know, how WSO2 is stitching into our scope of services, what we're doing for this auto OEM. And uh, it, it's a very critical component of the whole e-commerce experience strategy, which they want to offer to the end market powered by Tech Mahindra.